We have new details about why an off-duty airline pilot may have tried to turn off a plane's engines right in the middle of the flight. This is just such a bizarre story. National correspondent Mara Sirianni is in our newsroom with the new details. Hey, Mara. Yeah, guys, it's like something out of a horror movie, right? You never expect this to happen, especially um, done at the hands of a pilot. Granted, he was off-duty, but we've learned there was a mental health aspect here and also an aspect of some self-medicating. Um, court documents revealing the off-duty uh, pilot said he took psychedelic magic mushrooms 48 hours before allegedly trying to crash this plane. 44-year-old Joseph Emerson appeared in court in um, Oregon on Tuesday. He faces 83 counts of attempted murder and told police he hadn't slept for about 40 hours prior to boarding and had been struggling with depression amplified by a friend's recent death, adding this is the first time he'd ever taken that substance. The incident happened Sunday on a Horizon Air flight, which is owned by Alaska Airlines. Officials say Emerson was riding in the cockpit of the flight from Seattle to San Francisco when he said, quote, I'm not okay. According to court documents, Emerson then tried to activate the plane's fire suppression system, which would have cut off fuel to the engines. Um, Emerson said he thought he was dreaming when he pulled that handle. Thankfully, a quick thinking pilot was um, able to stop him. Again, people fly in this jump seat all the time. You have some audio from air traffic control now giving us some more insight this morning into those tense moments. The threat is now in the back of the airplane, uh, so we're, we're reduced on the threat level. Uh, I'm, I, we're going to check in with the flight attendant to make sure everything is running smoothly. He's uh, handcuffed and he's an aft back jump seat when law enforcement arrives. After we landed, about five police officers came on and escorted the gentleman from the back of the plane, um, and he was in zip ties. And, um, you know, the whole situation the entire time was very calm. Um, he was co cooperative and, um, you know, props to the Alaska crew for keeping everyone calm. Thankfully, everyone's okay. Can't imagine how scared they must have been, though. Emerson uh, pleaded not guilty to those 83 counts of attempted murder. He's also charged separately in federal court for trying to interfere, uh, interfere with the uh, flight crew there. Now, the FBI is also um, assisting with this one, and Alaska Airlines says he has been relieved of all duties pending the investigation. Jay, they're also investigating whether or not he really did have that substance um, in his system at the time. Yeah, and how much of that substance, and now experts are also questioning if it was still in his system or how much that could have altered his state. Yep. Uh, just a wild story here. National correspondent Mara Sirianni, thank you. Joining us now is Kit Darby, an aviation consultant and president of kitdarby.com. Kit, thank you so much for your time. So the pilot said mm -hmm. he took psychedelic mushrooms. The big question is, how is he getting in the cockpit then? And what screening or safeguards are in place to avoid people who might be under the fluence from getting in that place in such a critical spot in the plane? Well, he's certainly not, uh, <clears throat> there's not a, not going to be a test for mushrooms before each flight. Uh, I don't know of any pilot in my experience that's ever done anything like that. Uh, drugs and alcohol, uh, psychedelic mushrooms are absolutely a no-no for pilots at any point in their career. Uh, so it's very unusual. And to put the thing in perspective, however, there are about 40 million flights a year in the world, about 30,000 flights a day in the U.S., and you can count the times that a pilot has been involved and in directly or as a jump seater on one hand. So it, it's really a rare event. Nothing in my experience like it. Uh, I knew there was more to the story when it first came out. I mean, you know, pilots generally just don't do this. So the mushrooms, you know, part of an explanation. Uh, the, the check system is that pilots are monitored by the, the peers that they fly with every day, all day long. They're also checked by uh, trainers, by managers. Uh, they're check, spot checked by the FAA and by the company. Uh, and they're checked by their AME, their aviation medical examiner, when they take their annual or biannual physical. So th th there's been emphasis on that, but there's not a formal test or procedure uh, that you go through to be sure you're okay. It's just constant checking by th those around you that make sure you're okay. And normally when you get to the position uh, like this pilot was an established pilot, You've been checked, you know, every day for 10 or 20 years. Uh, when something shows up, the pilot's supposed to remove himself from duty. If he doesn't, then his surroundings, his peers and managers are going to remove him. Uh, he should not be allowed to get to this position, either by self-removal or screening. This is a very inefficient way to do it, but in this case, he did not get to the cockpit of his own airplane. Do you see 
an incident like this one where he is facing do dozens of charges of attempted murder to change the policy, the rules around jump seats moving forward? Well, I think that perspective of how infrequent it is uh, takes away the impetus to make a change. Do a better job of the rules we have, monitor more closely. There's been recent emphasis with the medical examiners to engage pilots and pursue any problems that they uh, sense. So I don't think there'll be a change in procedures. There'll be a redoubling of the current efforts in monitoring that we have. Um, you know, just to, if you pull these handles in the cockpit, the airplane doesn't fall out of the sky. It's like going down the road at 80 miles an hour and taking your foot off the gas. You're gonna coast a long way. So this airplane is at 30, 35,000 feet. If the engines were shut off, which they weren't, um, you would glide down at 1,500, 2,000 feet a minute. You'd be in the air 15 or 20 minutes to deal with this before the ground became an issue. So it, it wasn't imminent. I mean, the, the actions of the pilots were exactly the right thing. You know, he seems to have left the cockpit in a cooperative manner, which is, makes it a lot easier. But the airplane wasn't going to fall out of the sky. In fact, there are people in the back that were sleeping that uh, when they got to their destination uh, never knew it had happened. That being said, uh, this does trigger some kind of alarm that it's, I guess, just from a passive observer thinking a co-pilot who claims to be um, not all there mentally, um, whether he was on shrooms or the level of shrooms that he was on, that he has that easy access to where he can just pull a lever and then it shuts it off and then, like you said, uh, turns into a glider or whatever. That's a scary proposition. I agree. It's certainly very unusual and, and scary. It's not an imminent crash, but it's, uh, you know, if you have one engine failure, if it was to fail mechanically, it would be an emergency. If both engines failed uh, mechanically, it would be a serious emergency. But luckily, there are procedures for that, and pilots are trained in those very unlikely circumstances. And in this case, they acted quickly, and the engine never stopped. Had it stopped, it would have restarted easily with the reposition of the lever and perhaps the introduction of ignition, which is a, a single switch. It's a, just a remarkable story, and I'm so glad that no one got hurt from all of this. Aviation consultant and president of KitDarby.com, Kit Darby, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.